fellow Cameroonians, my dear compatriots, <clears throat> the national tragedy unfolding before our eyes urges me to address you today on two topics that involve most Cameroonians. On the one hand, the situation of civil war that is destroying with rare violence the Northwest and Southwest English speaking regions. And on the other hand, the phase two of the national resistance plan to the electoral holdup. On the civil war that ravages the Northwest and Southwest regions. The populations of the two regions have for some time been facing an escalation of atrocities of all kinds. Arbitrary arrest, summary executions, extrajudicial judgments, destruction of assets, and so on. In the total indifference of the power, some statistics report hundreds of deaths in all categories. Military, separatists, and civilians, thousands of refugees, and hundreds of thousands of displaced populations. Since the beginning of this conflict, the power in Yaoundé has favored the use of arms, which only exacerbate the situation. Because of the shortcomings in its leadership and governance, it is becoming clearer every day that this power has lost all credibility that can allow it to bring the necessary calm and to solve the problem satisfactorily for all the protagonists of the conflict. However, if nothing is done quickly, it is to be feared that the observed escalation will lead to total war. During the election campaign, I made the commitment that once elected, the problem of our compatriots in the Northwest and Southwest regions will be one of my priorities. So, with the confidence you have shown me, and in the face of the escalating suffering in the two regions, the resolution of this problem is absolutely urgent. It is from this perspective that I call on the various stakeholders through the following proposals which aim to provide concrete solutions to the grievances of our compatriots of the English-speaking regions while respecting the unity of our nation. As I have indicated in many previous statements, my approach in the resolution of this crisis is underpinned by the precondition that the secessionists undertake to renounce the partition of the country and to seek such a partition. If this prerequisite will be accepted by all, I propose the following actions to all stakeholders. At the military level, A, I call for an immediate ceasefire and the establishment of a disarmament, demobilization, and reintegration process for insurgent fighters. B, I ask for a general amnesty for the benefit of all those involved in this conflict, together with the release of those detained in this context. At the humanitarian level, I sent a message of deep compassion to the families of those who died 
as a result of the, this fratricidal conflict, whoever the victims are. My prayers are also with injured victims and their families. Given the atrocities suffered by the populations of the region concerned, urgent measures are needed. In this view, I address to the people of the Northwest and Southwest a message of encouragement and solidarity in their sufferings and exhort them to prepare to return to their towns and villages as soon as conditions are met for this purpose. I would like to assure you that initiatives are now being taken in the direction of the international community to stop the conflict and the atrocities it causes. Measures will be taken to compensate for the loss of property related to this conflict, including the reconstruction of the destroyed houses and the allocation of, to the victims of the loss of financial endowments to enable them to restart their activities. I ask that step be taken now to find refugees in Nigeria on the one hand and to bring back people who have taken refuge in the forest on the other hand. I appeal to the solidarity and indignation of my French-speaking compatriots with regard to the fate of their brothers and sisters in the Northwest and Southwest regions. I would like to point out to you that what is happening in this part of our country concerns us all directly. Do not give in to laurels of division. The foundation of our political struggle is the building of a fraternal and united republic within the framework of a united Cameroon. Therefore, the death or suffering of a compatriot, regardless of his place of residence or origin, must concern us as if it were ourselves. Let us not go in the ambient indifference of which we often only wake up when we have become the same victim of the unacceptable. In this perspective, I believe that it is high time to take concrete initiatives of solidarity with our English-speaking brothers and sisters. Also, I ask the people of the French-speaking regions of the country to implement with commitment and determination the following measures. A. For the remainder of November and until the end of December 2018, observe a half day without activity. Ghost town and villages every Monday from 1 p.m. in order to bring the power to take without delay the significant measures necessary to initiate the resolution of the crisis ravaging the regions concerned so that the population of these regions spend the end of the year holidays in their families. Cameroonian in the interior and in the diaspora must show their most generous solidarity towards the families of the Northwest and Southwest region, particularly affected by the ongoing conflict, by donations, especially food, clothing, money, etc., so that these families spend less difficult Christmas and New Year holidays. Donations should be sent to Aya Foundation, whose manager is Mr. Abine Aya. It is one of the few field-active NGOs 
in the English speaking regions and that knows how to channel to the people the donations. You can see the address of the foundation below your screen. B. From the 16th of January 2019, if the power persists in the military option and the refusal of any political initiative to resolve the crisis in the English-speaking part of the country, I will call Cameroonians from all regions and even in the smallest villages for gigantic peaceful marches every Saturday because although my constant concern is to spare the lives of Cameroonians, we cannot imperturbably let the blood of our compatriots continuously flow like a torrent when most of them are innocent and peaceful populations. The same goes with soldiers of all regional origins who are embedded in a dirty war. Let them kill us all if they want. I ask the power to stop the use of arms because it cannot be a solution to a political problem. I urge them to resort to an inclusive dialogue as many national and international bodies have recommended. I word prayers for military casualties who have fallen victim to an unjust war against their own brothers and sisters, an absurd war that the civilian leaders of the state are having them do instead of taking their political responsibility to put an end if not able to avoid it. Our soldiers, exhausted and mutilated for some of them, don't know again why they are in war. Getting Cameroonian soldiers to shoot at their rebellious compatriots, equipped with poor or wretched arms cannot be a sufficiently motivating goal for those who are expected to sacrifice their lives. I urge the brave elements of the National Defense Forces to refrain from using disproportionate violence against their compatriots. To our compatriots who took up arms in a secessionist intent, I would like to say that I hear their grievances against the regime in power, which may have led to such radicalism. These include the lack of effective and broad enough autonomy for the English-speaking regions of the country to take care of their own affairs, the failure to take into account the cultural specificity burned in the historical particularism of the English-speaking populations and more generally the injustices, the discrimination and the inequalities between citizens, the lack of a balanced development of all the regions of the country and the promotion of a hyper-centralized state where a handful of people are getting richer and richer to the detriment of the biggest number. On the other hand, I cannot agree with their approach, causing desolation and mourning among our brothers and sisters in the Northwest and Southwest regions, and to seek the partition of our dear and beautiful country, Cameroon, magnificent common work of Anglophones and Francophones. I commit myself, once the ceasefire has been secured, to economic measures to enable fighters to start income generating activities or to enter the socio-professional life in a decent manner as part of the disarmament, demobilization and 
reintegration operation to the economic community of Central African states, to the African Union, and to the United Nations. I ask them to give the necessary attention and the necessary priority to an urgent resolution of the crisis in the northwest and southwest of Cameroon. How many more deaths, refugees, widows, and orphans are required for your respective organization to have a compassionate look at the tragedy in the English-speaking regions of my country? Whatever the legal classification, atrocities committed in these regions are among the serious crimes identified by the international community and heavily sanctioned because they upset human conscience. The ongoing escalation in this crisis could lead to a situation of social and political instability in the Central African sub-region. To the friendly countries of Cameroon, I would like to recall that the history of recent conflicts teaches that indifference and wait-and-see attitude are serious mistakes in international resolution of conflicts. They usually result in humanitarian disasters, which could have been avoided if we had realized in time to invest in them by preventive and political measures. They must spare no effort to help Cameroon quickly end the ongoing massacre in English-speaking areas before it is too late. At the political level, it must be recognized that the crisis in the northwest and southwest regions stems from the refusal to take into account their historical and cultural specificities, a consequence of the British and French dual administration of after the First World War. This short-sightedness, which is an essential underlying reason for the grievances of the English-speaking population, has led, it must be recommended, to the marginalization of the English-speaking regions in the process of economic, political, social and cultural development of the country and more recently in the electoral process. However, just as we cannot deny that these historical circumstances contributed in a certain way to the enrichment of our cultural heritage, it is undeniable that they created certain particularism which are at the origin of the complexification of our socio-political system. Resolving the English-speaking crisis over the long term requires us to look at the evolution and conditions of the Cameroonian state as a result of the dual heritage of the British and French administrations over our country. We must not be afraid to engage in this exercise when it is admitted that it aims at building a Cameroonian nation stronger on its foundations and thanks to the unity of destiny of all its socio-historical and cultural components. Revisiting the state architecture of our country in order to get out of a hyper-centralization, the development of decentralized territorial units cannot in any way weaken our country. It can only strengthen it by accelerating the pace of its development, thanks in particular to the development of the regions that will become the driving force. In this perspective, 
it is necessary to go beyond the specific problems of the northwest and southwest regions in order to respond to the more general problem of autonomy and development in all regions of the country. With this in mind, I pledge to carry out as soon as possible, in any case at the end of the inclusive dialogue, the indispensable state reform for an effective takeover by the regions of their development, the central state ensuring the broad balances. In order to meet with double requirement to meet the specific expectation of the English-speaking regions on the one hand, and the state reform for a wide autonomy of all regions of the country on the other hand, the following initiatives will be launched. A. The establishment in the very short term of a Truth and Reconciliation Commission aim at informing the collective memory and recreating the conditions of trust between Anglophones and Francophones compatriots and between pop the population of the Northwest and Southwest and the state. B. The establishment in the very short term of an inclusive dialogue framework to capture the concerns of all stakeholders as well as proposals for solutions. C. The creation of a special mission for balanced regional development with a time-limited mandate. This multidisciplinary special mission will have to inventory and analyze different countries that have been confronted with a situation similar to that of Cameroon, proposing a comparative evaluation of the solutions in terms of advantages and disadvantages. This process should allow our country to adopt and adapt solutions and best practices in this area so as to avoid the pitfalls that other countries have experienced before ours. D. The granting of special powers to the Northwest and Southwest regions for an effective and efficient consideration of their particularities in the agreed areas. On phase two of the National Resistance Program to the Electoral Holdup, a few days ago, back from the headquarters of the African Union in Addis Ababa, I stopped in Douala to pay a visit to supporters of the national resistance bettered by the security deployment of the regime during the 27th October March. Visit the regional office of the party, CRM, attacked and damaged by security forces the same day and call on the people of Douala to massively go and support next 4th December the resistance fighters arrested for supporting the no to the electoral holdup. After my short message, some people loudly announced the end of the national resistance and that I have approved the victory of the incumbent president of the pa on the basis of the fabricated results of the Constitutional Council. Let them keep their illusions. The attempt to kill the national resistance are vain. On the 6th November 2018 in Yaoundé, I told you that the national resistance was just beginning. I told you on the 19th November in Douala to keep mobilized as the resistance continues. Let me reiterate that the resistance does continue. It is enriched with new expressions. The Cameroonian diaspora is now one of its flag bearers 
and the international action is getting deeper. I told you that I do not wish to lose any of you. I repeat it today. Because organizing a peaceful demonstration no to hold up cannot be done without preparation. And because I do not want to lose any of you, I urge you again to organize nothing that is not authorized by the National Resistance Plan or by the coalition, which makes sure that supporters of the Hold Up campaign are not killed. Indeed, we do not want anyone among you to die. At each phase of the resistance, the coalition will decide on the measures to be implemented after evaluation of the situation. Keep in mind that the ultimate goal of the National Resistance Plan is the re-establishment and the re restoration of the truth of the pools on the evening of 7th October 2018. The truth that makes me the president-elect of the Republic of Cameroon. As such, all our actions have so far contributed to this goal and will continue to support it. Resistance does not stop. On the contrary, it becomes denser and gradually gaining power because its ranks are growing and its organization is becoming more refined as each day goes by. Phase one was the start-up phase, allowing Cameroonians to relearn altruism by taking an interest in one another, learning to commit to the homeland again for free, and learning how to come together to save the motherland. The National Resistance Plan is the home in which Cameroonian patriotism can find new momentum. It is the framework of the fight against oppression and tribalism. It is based on a peaceful approach and respect of the national constitution because the national resistance is not national insurrection. The serious constitutional violations already present during the October presidential election process and repeated during the electoral dispute have reached a new level, which is the savage repressions of peaceful demonstrations no to hold up. The lack of respect for the constitutional freedoms and rights of Cameroonian citizens involved in the resistance is proof of this, since the public demonstrations, which moreover are peaceful like ours, are guaranteed by the Cameroonian constitution. Other evidence is the systematic use of torture and the use of other forms of violence such as beatings by police on peaceful protesters. Moreover, in view of the Cameroonian constitution, how can one understand other than as a manifestation of the arbitrary power, the criminal prosecution of certain peaceful resistors at the moment? Be aware that, unsurprisingly, the second phase of the National Resistance Plan will show that these constitutional violations are prolonged by violations of ordinary laws by the outgoing regime and, in fact, outgone through the ballot box. So, immerse yourself in phase two of our National Resistance Plan. Carefully follow this plan in its two new points that enrich those of phase one, knowing that our actions are aimed at specific strategic objectives.
trust us, the coalition and myself, I tell you again, I will not abandon you. I will not betray you. For I know more than anyone that it is possible together. So, together, we'll continue to say no to hold up. Long live Cameroon.